the book of Romans to the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. The scripture says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, on that foundation, I want to talk to you about cursing. Cursing. What is cursing? And what that's about. And all of us can look back and that are older in here and we recognize that we heard some words when we were growing up that our parents said, I don't want you to say that. You, you were had restricted words. There are certain words that were not to be said and we didn't understand the gravity of that uh, at the time because uh, it was not said, it depended upon how much of that was going on in, each, in everybody's home and in their environment. I know our children hear these words, what we call curse words. Curse words. We hear them at the school, we hear them sometimes in our home, sometimes we hear them from our uncle, our aunt, our uh, auntie, uh, whoever, but these words are bad words. That's what they call them, that's a bad word. Anybody ever heard bad word before? Yes, you've heard it before. There are certain bad words. But I, I didn't understand why, why not curse? Uncle was cursing. And we, we sometimes get a sense of maturity as we learn the curse words. When I grow up, I'm going to curse too. When I get to a certain point, I'll be able to use the bad words. Because uh, I won't be around mama and I won't be around dad. So why not curse? Well, I want to deal with that because our children are going to be faced with that every day of their lives. Curse words from different van vantage points in life. And it's the duty of the church to tell you why not to curse. Not just not to curse, but there's reasons why God is disappointed with curse words. Now, uh, let's look at some Look at this word, some definitions, if you have them up there. Um, curse is to wish or what? Impose trouble or misfortune to damn by proclamation or act. Curse means you are imposing a negative thought, a negative act towards another person or another thing. It never is positive, never. You see, that's what it means to curse. And, and so when we, 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 we have uh, moved it down to a definition now of what we call profanity, or profane. Profane is, is this is where the, this is where it is wrong in the sight of God. It's profane because it's an irreverence or a, a, a contempt for God. Or His sacred what? 
anything that is Christ-like or godly, curse words are, is a defiling act against God. When you curse somebody, you're wishing, I wish you would go to what you know where. Huh? But I'm going to say hell because it's in the Bible. I wish you would go to hell. That's, that's, that's not a cursed word, but that's a cursed in, uh, expression. What you're saying is, I, I would desire you to go to hell and burn eternally. Now, um, we, we grew up in a society that has made these bad words common words. These words that people naturally, you hear it on the radio, you hear it on the movie, you hear it everywhere you go, is somebody cursing, somebody trying to, 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 to damn another person, profane the word, of, the word of God by cursing somebody. We're not going to go over the list. You, you, you've heard them anyway. There are, there are several curse words. But I want you to also see that curse words are a result of a cursed soul. If we use these words without any any uh, feeling of, not, uh, of any, any kind. We, we do it, it's okay, it's no problem. It means something is wrong with a person using them. It is a sin. What does profanity mean? It's just profane language or conduct. So pro profanity extends beyond just what you can say, but what you can do. If you hate a person so much that you do different things to hurt them, you are operating in profanity because you have a profane spirit. We cuss each other out. We call it cuss. But you're actually cursing. We, it's a short thing. We, we cut it down a little bit to C-U-S-S. And see, sometimes we, be, well, we use it in the uh, plural as cuss in. And, and you see cuss, C-U-S-S-I-N, cuss, sin. Mama, uh, um, uh, Jonah, Jonah been cussing. Anybody ever told on somebody that they said a bad word? Yeah, I told on my sisters. <laughs> now, the reason I told on my sister is to get her in trouble. So, in essence, what I was doing was a type of profanity because I was trying to get her. Y'all, y'all, y'all act like this ain't never happened. Y'all. Y'all act like y'all so righteous. <laughs> but I'm here to tell our kids and, and me and us about the devastation of profanity. Out of the mouth comes blessings and cursings. The same mouth. And I, I'm, I'm bringing this to you because I want you to be cognizant of how you interact one with another. It is not a good thing to copy people at, at, that you hear saying this. I don't care if it's your mama or your daddy. This, this is a manifestation of evil that comes from within, that comes out in the way of profanity. And we, we don't think that much of it. I, I, when I was growing up, I didn't think that much of it. I'd say, I don't, 
when, they, when the preacher told me about it, I said, well, I really don't curse because I, I really hate the person. I'm just using language that I heard and in the context in which you use it. When I'm mad, and sometimes we get mama and daddy so mad, they use a few. Come on, let's tell the truth about this. I'm talking about Christian folk. Those words haven't left your mind. You get us hot enough, we'll say something. We'll use a bad word. Now, we don't want to do that. We don't, we're not trying to live that way. And it takes effort. You have to endeavor to keep those words out of your mouth. But Paul says, I want to present my body a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable before God. He said, if I'm going to do that, then I've got to govern what comes out of my mouth. Even when I'm mad. Be angry, but sin not. Now, what I want to do is give you a few scriptures that address these issues in the script in the Bible. Um, we'll start out first there uh, with Psalms 109, 17. The Bible says, and, and as he loved cursing, as he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As it delighteth not in blessing, so let it be far from him. He said, this, in other words, this says that you are hindering your blessings because you are cursing. And it said in this text, it says you loved cursing. Some, some people just love to talk bad to others. They want, they want the worst for others. This is where we get this expression, go to hell. We want the worst. And when we're, when we're, when we're upset with somebody, when we're uh, feeling badly about people, these negative words will come out uh, that express our desire. And it may not be what you really want, but you're really giving a curse when you say go to hell. You're really giving something. There, there are other ways of saying it, but all of it is designed to harm someone, either verbally or you manifest some kind of action behind the cursing. The Lord is displeased with this. He says, well, look at the text. He said, uh, and as it delighteth, as he delighteth not in blessing, you must be don't want a blessing. Because your delight is cursing. And then I want you to know, the more you curse, the less blessings come upon you. And sometimes, what you're cursing other people with will come to you. While you're telling somebody to go to hell, you may end up in. Now, now, now don't misunderstand me. We all are guilty. Even if we don't curse, we're still guilty. But I'm, I'm under, I want you to understand, these children to understand, why you need to govern your mouth. Yes. You just can't say everything and, 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 and talk to people any kind of way. 
because you disagree with them or because you're upset with them. You need to govern yourself. And you know something? It's just something bad about a woman that curses. It, 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 it demeans her even more. That you are just as vile sometimes as a man can be. It's vile with the man too now. But there's, there's some kind of home training that is limited. Or either you just being rebellious. I don't know, I don't know about some of these men in here, but I, I can't deal with no woman. I couldn't marry no woman that was always cursing. My goodness. I'm trying to stop this stuff myself. You, and you worse than me. <laughs> Amen. Certainly a woman ought to govern herself. I, I know you just like everybody. She's human just like everybody else. But I'm saying, be, consider, uh, especially if you're in the market. I wish I had a couple of witnesses. You see, if, if, if you're in the market for a husband, that foul mouth. And sometimes we don't reveal it until we get married. So govern it before you get married. Every two words. You see, we can't, that's, that's unattractive. That's unattractive. Nobody wants to be around you like that. And you shouldn't want a man that it, that's doing the same thing. Amen. You should make sure he governs himself around you. Amen. All right. Matthew 15, 11. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth this defileth a man. The stuff that comes out says a lot about what's in. It says a lot about what's in. And, and we all have to govern ourselves in that respect. And sometimes when we at the traffic light and the person pull right in front of you my goodness. Saw you there, but pulled right in front. Sometimes we'll say something. <laughs> I, I know I got some witnesses now. I got some witnesses now. <laughs> I know I got some witnesses. Some of us, some of us have learned profane signs that we can use with our finger. Amen. Amen. These are things that come about as a result of sudden discomfort. But yet we still must govern ourselves. It will defile us. Look what it says. He says, not what which comes in. We worry about what we eat. Worry about what's in us. Worry about, and if you read it, if you look at it on TV, it will profane you. A lot of us ain't mature enough to listen to cursing without it become a part of us. You can't listen to it and then 
uh, you find yourself doing it, you may need to stop listening to it. It's like pornography. That's another form of profanity. You look at it, you keep on looking at it, it's going to start motivating you. Now, none of our kids in here listen to cursing on YouTube, do they? <laughs> huh? You've heard, uh, you've heard, you, ch you changed it, uh, changed what you were looking at? <laughs> Anybody else? On YouTube now. The video to what? Like a rap video? Yeah, rap video. They got, they got curse words in the rap. Anybody heard that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard the rap music with the, with the lyrics, with all of the cussing and the this and that, calling girls out their name. Huh? Huh? We all are guilty, right? And we're here today to give you the real deal. Trying to get you to understand the real deal that you need to govern yourselves. What you re what you hear on that uh, what is it? Cell phone. Yes. So you can get it on the cell phone. You get it on the computer. Do you hear? Do you receive curse words on messages on Instagram? Yes. Okay. What about uh? What's the other one? Snapchat. Snapchat. Yeah. All right. All right. I ain't familiar with everything yet. Cause <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So look at look at what our children are listening to. When you couple that with some of us hearing hearing it at the house, hearing it at the school. Here at the bus stop, here on the basketball court. You begin to consider it as normal language. But it's not. It's not. And I'm here to tell you this morning that it's very important that you govern yourself. That you, when you see that, you change that. But see, you, the reason why some of you on it because you want to hear some curse. You want to you want to see something that you ought not see, and hear stuff you ought not hear. But the Lord is speaking to you today, and He says you need to watch what you hear because you're gonna repeat it if you keep hearing it. Uh, James, the first chapter, verse twenty-six. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. What, what, what he, say, he says, you, what we have to do, if we, we come in here, we sing amazing grace and how sweet it sound. Saved a wretch like me. That's good. That's wonderful. And then you get outside of the church and some of us inside the church and say some stuff we should be saying. He says, if you can't bridle your tongue, you're deceiving your own heart. And your religion, your coming to church, your singing the songs, your prayers, are vain. He says they're empty. When you practice. Now I know nobody's perfect. We all going to fall. We're going to fall short. I'm talking about getting into a sequence of conduct. 
that you just keep on doing? Yes, sir. Do I listen to it? No, not anymore. You see, because we used to, in our generation, they had songs with some questionable stuff in it. But not like today. It's not like today. See, y'all hear it all day. You been with, with the things in your ear? <laughs> yes. We know the deal. So the thing, I, what I'm saying is, I'm trying to get you to see that I don't want you to ever come say, well, we went to church, but nobody ever told us this was wrong. Now you know. Not, from, not because Reverend Smith said it, Pastor Smith said it, not because anybody said it, it's the word of God. And so he says, he says your religion is, is, is not very much if you can do that and it doesn't bother you. Let's go to another one. Colossians, the fourth chapter, verses, verse 6. This admonition. Let your speech be always with, with grace. Seasoned with salt. My God. That you may know how you ought to answer every man. He says it need to be, you need to have some some salt in, in how you, what, what, what is salt? Salt is a symbolism of pre preserving, a preserver, that you might know how to answer folk. See, you can, you can mess yourself up in a relationship with people that want to help you by the language you use. You can't come into nobody's job talking about I'm going to curse through, the, through the, this whole thing and expect these people to give you some work. You have to season what you say. Even if, even if you know something, even if you don't feel right about some things, you, you have to really season what you say. Because what you say going to make an impression one way or another. This is vitally important for you. It's going to get you a long way if you can govern your mouth. Because uh, it says a lot about what's in your heart. He says you, that you may know how you, you ought to answer. You ought to answer. Every man and every woman. You're going on a date with a girl and all you, your whole conversation is S and I and all the other words we, we, we got. And, and what, what kind of impression do you leave? Now, these young girls today, some of them, they down with it. Yeah, he cursed. He, he cursed, man. That's good. And, and you think that you get getting somebody you can hang with that's up to date with, the, with what is happening in the world. You see that as being somebody that's, that's good to hang with. But you should tell, first of all, he going to mess around and call you the B word. And some of them satisfied with that. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you'll say it. You'll say the B word to somebody you're trying to date, and the, and the, and here's the problem: the girl will accept it and say, "Yes, I, I'm a B. I'm a B." <laughs> and what does that mean, though? What does that mean? You don't have a lot of value in you. And who you are and who you represent. 
Don't you ever let a boy call you a B and get away with it. You should run as far away from him as you can. Don't even see him in the, in the sunset somewhere. Because they're not, they, they're not trained. They're not people of God. And you don't want to be unequally yoked with non-believers. Colossians 3 and 8. I'm going to be done in a minute. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. What, what is anger? What is anger? It's an emotion, right? And in anger, you don't think what? Good things. Huh? So anger can promote bad communication. Look what he said there. Also wrath, that's when you're trying to get back at somebody Malice is how you feel on the inside of, about somebody so bad that you're willing to do negative things to them. Not only will you say something wrong, you'll do something wrong. He says uh, blasphemy is things said against the Lord. Filthy communication is this cursing we're talking about. I want to drive it in your head this morning so that you will understand when you leave this place, what did we talk about? All Pastor did was tell us about cursing. He just aggravated us to death about this word cursing and these words we say without any reservation whatsoever. And we don't say them in the church, do we? Huh? Huh? We won't say them in the church, do we? Curse words. Wait a minute, who are you pointing at? Huh? <laughs> now, if you've done this, it's not the end of the world. I'm telling you, you need to stop. Stop. Just say no. Now somebody said, yeah, you said you heard him, right? He heard you. Huh? No, not him. So you busting him now. <laughs> What are them asking you to do? Just do what? No, I want to hear from y'all. I'm asking you to do what? I can't hear. You. Can't hear you. Okay, that's 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 the message. I want you to stop cursing. God is going to bless you in a way that you never imagined if you learn to govern your mouth. Now, now, here's the problem. I've heard some of you curse. I ain't going to mention no name. Mm -mm. No. I would never embarrass you like that. But what I, I, I have heard some of us young folks. Yeah, me, us. I'm young too. Us young folk. Yes, I know you have. But what, what have I just told you to do? We need to do what? Stop. There, there you go. There you go. Now, so before we indict somebody else, all the, what we really want to learn today is to stop. Okay. Let's go to the next one. 
uh, Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. What does it mean to persecute somebody? Huh? Punish wrong. Okay. Persecute. You you persecute them, but you and he says, bless them which persecute you. In other words, do you wrong? Now, are you used to doing right to people that do you wrong? Huh? Now, somebody is going to do, to, do, to do you wrong. That is going to happen in your life. But here's what God says about it. Those people that persecute you, don't curse them. Don't persecute them back. Because that same way you do that, it's going to come back to you. Let God handle people who are bad. Let the Lord handle them. Don't you do it. So he says, don't, don't curse. Don't, don't say something because people said something to you. Now, one, one, uh, let's look at another. Ephesians 4.29. We all know this one. 29, uh, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. What is edifying? To build. If I, if I tell you, Jacoby, uh, you know something, you ain't gonna never be nothing. You're just gonna be a loser. Is that edifying? No. I don't know what you're going to be. But you know what you want to be. So if somebody says to you that you're never going to be something, they don't know that. Because you'll turn around and tell somebody else the same thing. What you say to somebody is, Jacoby, I say, okay, Jacoby, I pray to God that God does the best for you. That's different from you. I, I say you ain't going to be no good. I can't make that happen. I'm not God. You need to be building up one another. Now, we got some A students in here. And the non-A students say some bad things to people who are doing good in class. Why don't you edify them? And some of you A folks say some bad things about you C students and D students. Why don't you Edify them. Build them up. Say, look at him. Uh, Sam, say, look at him. Man, you need some help with that man? You, you got a little problem with this, this, and that, and the other? Come check me out. I'll help you. That edifies him. And that person should say, you know what, that, that doggone Sam, he helped me out with some of that mess they people trying to get me to learn. And I, I know I, do. I can grasp it a little better now. Right. This is how you ought to work together. We ought not be looking for the wrong in everybody. We need to be looking for the right. That we minister grace. That's ministering grace one to another. You don't have to be enemies. You're not here to, to, to tear down nobody. We're here to build each other up. 
we all in the same boat. We need God. We all have fallen short. We all fail. We just like sheep go astray. That's why the Lord is so wonderful because if we sin, he's gracious enough to forgive us of our sin and allows us to come back into right fellowship with him. That's what you ought to do with one another. And Tyreek, I want you to be the leader in doing that. You, Sam, Jacoby, and especially you. Because you have a good mind. And you know right from wrong. You need to be a leader. So when, uh, look at this, look at this. Look at this, look at this. And leaders have learned to obey. Leaders learn to respect. You learn to respect elders, not just because they're older, but because they know more than you, and it's the right thing to do. You don't know everything. Now, in my time, I know this is a different time, but we was, if you had a, a Mrs. Robinson would come and we was chewing gum in church, she'd come and get that paper, just put it in front of you, get it to me. And you know what? You didn't even think about disrespecting Miss Robinson. You didn't even think about it. Because if you did, you would think the world had come down on you. Everybody would jump down, especially your parents. And if Miss Robinson had to twist your ear, she just twist your ear. You wouldn't run and tell your mama nothing, because if you tell your mama, your mama gonna wear you out. I mean, on the scene. They'll take you out while the preacher preaching and wear you out. That's then. See, the, the, these things, but see, now folks say, no, put your hand on my baby. But we knew those people loved us. They cared for us. They did all they could to help us. And you know I was too stupid to realize it. I was a good student, but I was stupid. I was doing some of the stuff y'all do. Don't, don't realize it. Don't realize you've got a blessing in, in, in the house. Where people that love you, that care about you, don't want you to make no mistakes, trying to give you good advice. But I was stupid too. But I learned and I missed them. Proverbs 21, 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. And let's go to Psalm, Psalms 19, 14 because we're going to wrap it up now. We, Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be accepted. We know how important that statement is. He says, Lord, let the words of my mouth, not his mouth, let the, my mouth, not that I'm worried about his mouth, my mouth, and the meditations of my heart 
be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. But see, first of all, you got to realize he is your strength and he is your redeemer. If you don't respect that, you won't respect him. We all got to respect something and somebody. The police that put you in the car, you know, you don't know him from the man on the moon, but you're going to get in that car. <laughs> man stopped me a few months ago. I was going 30 in a 25. He said, I'm going to let you slide this time. I said, yes, sir. I didn't need no $75 ticket. You got to know when to say yes, sir. So I just wanted to let you see it through the scripture. There are, oh, there are hundreds of texts on this. I, I, I just picked out a few. You can, you can go a, a long way with this particular thing about what comes out of our mouths and how we ought to be careful of how we say things because your words can hurt somebody. Yeah. They can hurt them. Now, I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I know this ain't Sunday school what I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you about this word, these bad words, these bad words. What are you going to do about your bad words? You need to make up in your mind today what you're going to do about it. You, and we've all said them. We're all guilty. But I want you to know that you need to do something about it. And I need a few volunteers to stand up here and tell me what you're going to do. And I expect my leaders to be the first one. All right, so how can I refrain from that is build a bigger vocabulary so I can refrain from those words. Okay. Uh, I can start. I can start. Well, bad. stop saying bad words by listening to the music, listening to other people say it. Uh, that's it. I can remove myself from situations where people do say bad words, so I don't adapt their habits out of just like. Sam curse. Uh, what I would do is just get get away from that environment. That's that's our young leader. Now, on this second row back in. Stand up for Jesus, Trinity, all of you that can speak, let's go. Yeah, you, come on. Lincoln. How I will stop cursing is by making 
a better, by making a better vocabulary and I will stop um, putting myself in like wrong, in like bad situations and like be around better people. What I would do to stop cursing is, is hang around better, hang around better, better people. What I would do. What I would do is hmm? what I would do just not just say the words no more. What I would do to stop cursing, I would pick a vi a, a a better voc I I would have a better vocabulary. was on trial, you testified <laughs> and said to the judge, I will do this. Right. Now we're going to see. We're going to see. We thank God for what he so, uh, does for our kids. Um, I, I felt the very important because I had I know we have a problem with this. Not, not, not just in New Providence, but in anywhere you go. Amen. So, uh, but it's our duty to tell you the truth and our duty to try to get you to see what does say at the Lord and how he can help you. I want to thank all of you guys and you girls for getting up and, and saying what you would like to do. Uh, we are very proud of you Amen. and we love you. So let's hear God and do the best that we can to speak those things that are pleasing in his sight.